As I put this video together, we are just over 24 hours away from the launch of Red Dead Redemption 2. I can't believe I just said that. It feels like just yesterday we were watching that reveal trailer for the very first time. Okay, that's a lie. It felt like 50 million years ago that we saw that trailer for the first time, and this wait has been absolute torture. But it's finally almost over. And another thing that's almost over is our 30-day daily video journey leading up to the launch of Red Dead Redemption 2. Believe it or not, after 30 straight days, I finally reached the end of my notes. We've covered literally everything there is to cover going into the launch of Red Dead Redemption 2. All 50,000 plus words of my notes have been touched on in one way or another. And I hope you have all enjoyed my crazy, crazy thoughts on all of this madness. But we still have a couple of things to wrap up with today's video and tomorrow's because then the game's out and that's a whole different ball game. Believe it or not, we've only just scratched the surface. Today, we are gonna look at three final insane little features that I noticed during the pre-launch period for Red Dead Redemption 2. Let's not waste any more time and get right into it. I feel like deep lore is one of the things Rockstar always stayed away from. Even though they've been at the forefront of a genre full of games that jam pack their worlds with lore at every corner. Most elements of lore in the GTA games usually acted as their own little self-contained thing that was easily ignored, either in side missions or through some digging on the player's part. Sometimes though, they actually had their own impact on the game's world itself. Like for example, when those posters started popping up with the porn star in Vice City and I was like, hey, I did that. Those porn star posters were there because of me. It sounds like there will be much more of an emphasis on lore in various different forms in Red Dead Redemption 2. Your actions will influence this world more than any other Rockstar game before it, which usually featured worlds that just kinda kept on ticking no matter what you did. These world-changing actions will be reflected in newspapers that you can pick up and look at. They cover the events that occur throughout the story in real time. There are also a large number of letters and books discoverable across Red Dead Redemption 2 that are filled to the brim with lore fleshing out the world. Early on in the game, you acquire a camera. You could take pictures of various different things you come across, you could take selfies, but you will also be periodically handed photos and asked to find these people in the game world and get a better photograph yourself. Each of these photos contain a written, almost biographical description of the subject you'll be looking to take a snapshot of. And then, of course, there are animal compendiums that you can fill out, and gun catalogs at each store that you could read, features we've already covered during Red Dead Daily that are sure to flesh out this world to a fantastic degree. A lot of this definitely sounds like it takes a page out of more traditional RPG games. Really, after going over all those stats in yesterday's video, and now covering all of the lore here today, it really does feel like Red Dead 2 is more of an RPG than any other Rockstar game that came before it. With an unprecedented amount of written info provided on important characters, animals, weapons, and the world itself. According to some hands-on impressions, Arthur is informed early in the game that there are world-famous gunslingers spread across the world that you could go out and search for. They are listed on trading cards that you could find throughout the game, and basically once you get one, you could track the gunslinger down like you would hunt an animal. We got a brief look at one showdown with a famous gunslinger in the second gameplay trailer. Supposedly, they basically work like the legendary animals in the game. There aren't very many of them, and when you do find them, they will test your skills. These obviously aren't your average grunts or gang members. If you want to take them out, you're going to need to be comfortable with a gun, know your way around the combat system in the game, and perhaps most importantly of all, level up your Deadeye in order to have an upper hand. I'm sure if you're able to outduel every one of these famous gunslingers, there will be a reward waiting for you at the end. A sweet ass weapon or outfit would be pretty awesome indeed. Tonics were in the first Red Dead Redemption, but they played a pretty minor role. 
this time around, with all of the different systems that are present in Red Dead Redemption 2 that weren't in the first game, they are going to be far more useful and probably downright crucial at times. This is especially going to be the case if you want to complete certain aspects of the game quicker and easier than normal. You better believe getting some of those gold medals will certainly become a lot more doable with the right tonics at your side. Or maybe you just want to grow a beard hella long. Yep, there's a tonic for that. You can increase the speed your hair and facial hair grow with a tonic you could purchase from the general store. There's also a tonic you could give to your horse that will increase its stats. It seems like there are tonics that could be used as antidotes for poisoning as well. Someone who had hands-on time with the game mentioned coming across someone on the side of a road with a lethal snake bite, and in order to cure him, you needed to give him the right tonic. Finally, I'd bet money on a health tonic being purchasable in the game, basically allowing you to brute force missions by taking damage, drinking tonics, and sprinting your way to the finish line after brutally murdering everyone in your path without a second thought. And I cannot wait to try that for myself. That would be amazing. So that's about it for today. You are now all caught up on a total of 12 unique, insane little features that you'll find in Red Dead Redemption 2. Now keep in mind, this is all based on just a tiny, tiny fraction of the game that previewers were able to get their hands on. I'm certain that we'll probably find another hundred insane little features and easter eggs once we get our hands on the game and are able to explore the living hell out of that massive world. And you better believe I'll have videos on my channel here of each and every one of those secrets and easter eggs that I managed to find. Because easter eggs are freaking sweet and everyone knows it. We are finally at the finish line everyone. Tomorrow will be the final pre-launch Red Dead Daily, acting as the perfect summary of our last 29 days of action together. I will also have the game in my hands tomorrow, so expect the first post-launch Red Dead Daily at some point tomorrow as well. We are so close I could taste it. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more awesome Red Dead Redemption 2 content, please hit that like button and subscribe to my channel, because there is so much more to come, it's downright scary. After watching all of these daily videos, I hope you're ready, and I hope you're hype, because we are just getting started. Thanks so much for watching everyone, and take care.